There are two different ways to inflate the wing, either facing the wing called reverse launch or with your back to it called forward launch. It's a good idea to master both techniques because each one has its advantages in different conditions. In general, use forward launch in light winds and reverse launch in wind over 10 km per hour. That way you'll be able to choose the most suitable technique according to the weather and the terrain. Let's first look at a forward launch with your back to the canopy. Pilots usually use it when there is little or no wind since it provides continuity throughout the thrust, inflation and launch run and thus prevents the wing from collapsing. Jerome Cano, a test pilot with ozone paragliders, is going to take us through the steps and techniques of a flawless inflation. The wing is correctly laid out facing the wind. Then, the pilot positions himself in its center. He's ready to give the thrust. You need to provide enough thrust so that the wing rises evenly until it's just over your head. Be careful, the thrust you'll give depends on the wind speed. If the wind is strong, especially when performing a reverse inflation, give very little thrust, otherwise you'll be yanked off the ground. The wing climbs until it is directly over your head. To prevent it from overrunning you, use the brakes to control it. Without this control, the wing will overrun you, lose its lift and collapse. At this point, you can visually inspect your wing to make sure it has the right shape and that there aren't any knots in the lines. Now's the time to decide whether to continue or abort the launch. You're ready to start your launch run. Notice Jerome's position. He is leaning forward with his shoulders sticking out beyond the risers. To abort your launch, pull the brakes all the way under your backside and continue to advance until the wing falls behind you. As you can see, a forward inflation is also possible in strong winds. However, a reverse inflation is more suitable for strong winds. It enhances the pilot's ability to control his wing. If he needs to reduce his force, he can walk uphill towards the wing without the risk of falling. Pilots tend to prefer this method since it lets them see the wing during the entire inflation process. Let's take a look at the two main techniques for grasping the risers. Start out by spinning to face the wing in the direction that seems most natural to you. The risers should be crossed in front of you. The first technique, known as cross brake reverse launch, allows the pilot to inflate the canopy and then launch without letting go of the brake handles. Jerome takes the left brake handle in his left hand, then the right brake handle in his right hand. Then he grasps the risers in front of each hand. Let's go over again from the beginning how he grasps the handles and inflates the canopy. Jerome can launch without ever letting go of the handles. Notice the skill involved in each step. Inflation, timing, visual inspection, spinning, filling the wing. The second technique used to hold the controls is referred to as the uncrossed hands technique. Let's go back to the situation where we're facing the wing with the risers crossed in front of you. This time, Jerome takes the left brake handle in his right hand and the right brake handle in his left hand. In other words, the handle located in front of each hand. Then he grasps the risers in front of each hand. Some pilots find it easier to control the wing using this technique. Its one major inconvenience is that the pilot has to momentarily let go of the controls at the important and potentially most dangerous part of the launch, when the pilot makes the turn. The 
paraglider is a pendulum-like system. In the air, without any stress acting upon it, it will naturally tend towards equilibrium. What this means is that in the air, if the wing recedes behind or advances past the pilot, the pilot will automatically be brought back under it. Likewise, when the wing swings to the left or to the right, the pilot and his equipment are brought back in line by the pendulum. On the ground, everything is different. If the wing goes one way, the pilot needs to move to get back underneath it. The pilot must act as the pendulum whilst on the ground. During a launch, if your wing rises unevenly, don't panic. It's easy to recover from the situation and make a normal launch. The first thing to do is follow your wing while at the same time trying to correct its course with the opposite brake handle. Once you've managed to get the wing stabilized above your head, you're ready to start your launch run towards the exit corridor. Look at this example with Jerome. His wing is rising unevenly and is abnormally centered in relation to the wind. He'll know from experience to get under the wing while correcting with the brake handles. Having stabilized the wing, he'll be able to spin and start his launch run. As you've just seen, getting the wing to rise evenly depends on how well it is centered in relation to the wind. When launching, use the wind to slightly pre-inflate your wing and check your centering. The two halves of your wing must be at the same height. With experience, turning around will become second nature. However, during our first few inflations, sometimes we're not quite sure which direction to turn. There's an easy way to remember. Look for the riser on top. This is the direction you have to turn. Inflating in strong winds is possible but requires a great deal of skill. A lot of launch accidents occur when strong winds are present. Here's a hint to reduce the force of your wing during the inflation. Only use the central A-risers to inflate canopies that are equipped with four A-risers. This way, only the center of your wing is tensioned while inflating. Its force is reduced. The most important thing is to practice as much as possible inflating on the ground. It'll put you at ease and provide you with all the techniques you'll need during a launch.